What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Dauntless Outdoors. Today's episode, we are diving out of the Bahamas. This is a little bit north of the West End, and I am diving around 70 foot or so. And this is my first dive on this spot. So, kind of looking around, as you can tell, there's some huge ledges, huge rocks, big caves, all sorts of stuff like that. So, I'm looking around, trying to see up in these holes, see if there's any black grouper, kubera, or anything like that. And as soon as I turn around, I spot a decent mutton right there. And it's been a little while since I've seen anything worthwhile shooting. So, turn around, decide to line up on this fish, and hopefully take a pretty good shot. So, wait until he's a little bit closer take the shot and unfortunately my shot pulls out i'm not exactly sure how that happened but i did break the fish's spine so it's freaking out on the bottom and i did one more drop hoping to find it but i watched a kubera go to that rock and it couldn't find the fish either and unfortunately i was i was unable to locate where it was but <clears throat> i headed back down and I threw a flasher out just to try and bring some of these mutton in. And as you can tell, there's a ton of them. I just couldn't get a shot on any of these fish. They were all relatively smart. I was uh, I was trying to track this one here. Maybe hope for him to go in a hole and get a shot. He goes over that. I went to speed up a little bit and he was out of there. So turn around, check to see if any of the other ones stuck around. And of course, none of them did. So I headed up to the surface. And now I'm back down here, I'm on the bottom. This is a little bit of a longer dive. I think I'm in about 80 foot of water or so. And I <laughs> spotted something really weird on this. There was a grouper that I was really unsure of what this fish was. So pick up my pole spear and I go to chase this fish just kind of to take a shot, but I wasn't really sure what it was. So start heading over to it and I really still to this day have no clue what type of fish this was i never took the shot because i was unsure and i kind of just let it swim if you guys know what this grouper is please let me know in the comments it was pretty cool to see it wasn't a giant but he was definitely a little guy it's pretty cool to see a different species like that so we left that area and we're now back towards just the west end area and I'm diving about 100, 105 foot here. I threw, actually I didn't throw a flasher at all on this dive. I was just headed down towards the bottom and I spotted a pretty nice sized Kubera, but unfortunately I knew it wasn't gonna give me a shot just because of its body language. But as I was turning there, I noticed a really nice black grouper. You'll see him towards the end of the dive. I can see him just a little bit which is why I'm throwing all this dust and grunting hoping he would come closer and I'm loading up my pole spear and all that but unfortunately it never gave me a shot I peeked my head around the corner hoping to see him and I, I can see the fish but he's definitely not going to give me a shot at all so yeah, I've been down here for a little while now and I knew it was not really worth my time to keep sitting down here and waiting for that fish to come closer because it wasn't gonna so slowly head up to the surface and if you look in the dead middle of the screen here in a second you'll see that giant black probably about 40 pounds or so swimming just really calmly but it definitely wasn't gonna give me a shot i got back up to the surface and the current was kind of pushing a good bit so i got swept off the spot and i never got a chance on that fish pretty sad about that one just because it was such a giant grouper but we moved in from there and there's a really nice mutton that i spotted so i pressed record as fast as i could i thought i was recording but i really wasn't and i noticed he was swimming to the right side of this reef and i knew i could get a shot if i kind of stalked him a little bit and that i did i stalked him he came just within range took a shot towards the bottom of his tail and it, it luckily held. Unfortunately, he kind of tore up that coral there, but there's not much I could do about that. And as you can tell, I'm letting out a little bit of real line just to make sure I'm not tugging too hard on my shot and I didn't want it to pull, but I ended up landing a really nice mutton. So 
So after I landed that fish, I decided it was time to move out a little bit deeper because we spent a little bit more time up there and we weren't seeing much going on. So now we're back out in that 100, 105 foot range. And this is something that I thought was really interesting. All this grass, typically we'd never see anything like this in the area which I dive just because the viz is not good enough for grass to get sunlight. But as you can tell in the Bahamas, the viz is so good that grass can grow in literally a hundred foot of water. So that was pretty cool to see. But as I was sitting down here, there was a ton of hogfish trolling along through this deeper grass. And I noticed that for a while, but it was just so hard to locate an area where you could really get a nice size hogfish just to pinpoint where it was going to be because drop into a hundred foot and then swimming around hoping to find one wasn't working but on my way up on this dive i spotted a huge hogfish but unfortunately the current was moving a good bit and i couldn't get to him so i did another drop here hoping i could get another chance on him but unfortunately he was nowhere to be found but i uh spotted a decent sized mutton and i was hoping there would be another one that was bigger so i I did my typical hunting tactic. I think this dive was around 2 minutes and 15 seconds or so. And I think it was about 106 foot. So, pretty good dive here. I take my time hoping to spot a bigger mutton than I had shot the whole trip. But unfortunately, there was only small ones around. And I was not going to waste the dive to this depth. So, when I look back up, I spot that same mutton I saw a little bit earlier and i knew i was going to take the shot on this fish just because he was honestly a pretty decent mutton so load up my pole spear and i start heading towards him hoping i could get a shot he wasn't close enough just yet to get one so he lets me close the gap pretty easily and i decided it's time to take the shot nailed him and i knew i was going to pull off but i also didn't want to have that fish way too close to me just in case a shark pulled up in this deep of water so head up to the surface land that fish and hop in the boat. Is there a structure here? No. So. so after diving this deep for so long, we were kind of figuring out what we needed to find and that was individual structure, which means some structure that's isolated from the rest because if you find too much structure, the fish will have too much area to be. And if you find too little structure, there just won't be that many fish. So. Our goal was to find a little bit smaller structure that was still good enough to hold some nice fish and that we did find. As you can tell, very nice Kubera. I'm in 112 foot of water and I'm trying to get close enough, but unfortunately that just wasn't close enough to really mm -hmm. let a shot fly, especially with how thick Kubera scales are and unfortunately holding a full spear. But I lay down here trying to do a little bit of grunting and this fish is a little bit dumber than the rest of the ones that I've seen, but still a really smart fish compared to like a hogfish or a mutton or something like that. So unfortunately I spent about, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds trying to get this fish and unfortunately it just wouldn't work out. So I up to the surface. I think that dive was uh, two minutes and 10 seconds or so. So I gave it my best, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. So after we hunted the deeps for a while, we were uh, kind of going back in a little bit. We were in about 70 foot or so, 75 foot. And I spotted a grouper from the surface and I told Troy to go down because I had already shot an ass off and that's what I thought this fish was. I could see it was sitting on the backside of this little rock structure, kind of in a little sea fan thing, just waiting to ambush nice fish. And as you can tell, as soon as I saw it swim, I knew it wasn't a Nassau, and I kind of wish I would have gone down and been the one to shoot at it. But that fish took off. We couldn't get a shot on this dive, and it went to a little cave, which I watched it swim to, and I figured we were going to get a shot on. So we head over to the cave. Troy goes down, and that fish gives him a pretty decent shot. It opened its mouth, apparently, and looked at him so Troy took the shot literally in the fish's mouth and I watched this happen so I knew I had to go down and give him a backup shot to make sure he landed this so as I'm getting down here that fish is pulling pretty hard and I wanted to make sure it just was gonna stay on the whole time and 
I took a kind of a weird shot that I would never take, but I saw where Troy's shot was and I really didn't want to waste time on a shot that I knew might pull out. So took that shot and landed a pretty awesome yellowfin grouper. I think he was around the 20 pound mark, so definitely a nice one. So I don't know if you heard it fully, but Troy said he spotted another one, and I knew it was game time. So we got that fish back to the boat, and I decided I was going to go back down. I knew I wasn't in the exact same area, but I spotted a couple decent grouper. And these ones were black grouper, a little bit different than what Troy just shot. And I was hoping I was going to be able to get a shot on that one right there, just because he was around the 30-pound mark and definitely a very nice grouper. And I was trying a different strategy just because my going to the bottom on the last couple black grouper that I'd seen didn't work out and as you can tell this strategy also didn't work out so I didn't get a shot on those fish and what you typically hear is you need to follow them back to a hole and that probably will work but I never really got to try it out this day but as you can tell I spotted a yellowfin grouper which is a lot different than those guys and Honestly, a little bit easier to hunt, so I knew I was in business. I saw that fish, headed up to the surface, and kept an eye on him until I was ready to do another drop. So I breezed up, got ready, and this fish kind of just sat in the same spot. Honestly, I kind of messed up on this drop. I should have gone down right where I am right now, or a little bit back current, and slowly crawled up to this fish. And I recognized that after this dive, but it was a little bit too late. As you can see, I'm kind of approaching this fish a little bit too quickly. I'm going as slow as I possibly could, but it was still too too quick just because I was sinking towards him too fast. And me approaching that fish that quickly spooked him off, but I didn't chase him, so I knew it wasn't going to fully just swim away as fast as it could. It went over the next little hump and kind of sat there, so I knew I was going to get another shot, and I decided I was going to do it right this time. So I went down as slow as I could and dropped to the back side of the reef and kind of slowly pushed over towards where this fish was, hoping I wasn't going to spook him away. I mean, the viz is so good that they can literally see you sitting there on the surface. So I get down here. There's a decent hogfish. It was not worth my time at all compared to this grouper. And as you can tell, that fish is so beautifully colored. So I kind of approach this fish, trying to hide behind this little sea fan and get as close as I possibly can take that shot and if you watch closely you'll see he bends my pole spear shaft just in seconds so I knew this fish was really nice just from him bending it with that much ease so I decided I was going to let out some real line head up to the surface and breathe up to go back down on a back dive yeah really big so Troy did a dive. I didn't include it just because it was kind of uneventful. And what he noticed was I didn't have the greatest of shot. And also that fish was moving around. So it was really dusted. So as I was sitting there, the current picked up to about three or four knots. The current is ripping. I couldn't even swim against it. So I had to just pull down my belt line and get to this fish. And as soon as I get down here, I noticed there is a big hole where I took the shot in that shot could pull at any second and it does exactly that that big loud bang at the beginning was my shot pulling and now I'm literally just fighting this fish with my hands in the ledge so what it's doing is it's just spinning in circles because I have the whole exit blocked and I finally got my hand in the gills and was able to swim this fish up to the surface as you can see my pole spear is like I don't know 20 yards away from me and I'm holding the fish so my shot clearly pulled and I still managed to land the grouper, so I was very happy with how it turned out. Alrighty, y'all. 
just got back to the dock. Ended off today with a yellow fin grouper. It's my first one ever. It's probably about 30 pounds gutted. Real nice one. One little mutton. Another pretty good mutton and a schoolmaster. And Troy's flying his over there. He got a yellow fin. So. Pretty good day. We got one more day left in the Bahamas. It is Tuesday. We leave Wednesday on a ferry. So catch you guys tomorrow. Peace. Last day, it is day three or four, I don't know, Wednesday. I leave in like a couple hours, but I have to get back pretty early so I can actually catch my ride. But suit on, no wetsuit, just gonna throw some fins on, grab the false gear, and call it a day. So, catch in the water. So I hopped in the water, and honestly, I really wasn't expecting that much from this day. We were a little bit shallower than we had dove in the past couple days. And also, it was like a very short day. So I decided I was just going to do a little bit of scouting, swim around, and hopefully see something nice. And to my surprise, there was a pretty decent hogfish just chilling. He was sitting next to some sea fans, trying to hide and just pick away at some, some little things on the bottom. And it gave me a pretty easy shot, honestly. Took the shot and I looked around making sure there wasn't any sharks and they weren't going to attack me. But there wasn't any and I ended up landing my first hogfish of the day. So as you can tell, I'm recording in the third person view. This is Nick, the, the guy that invited me to the Bahamas and allowed me to stay with him. So I was very happy to take this footage for him. I'm going to kind of point out a little bit of things that I noticed that just in case you are doing them, it might help you to improve just a little bit. What I noticed was he was a little bit more like, I don't know how to say it, um, not as calm on his duck dive there. It kind of created a little bit of commotion, which doesn't make a big difference when you're hunting for fish like this, a grouper, but it does make a big difference when you're hunting pelagics, and as you can tell, Another thing I noticed is he's kind of moving around a little bit more than he needs to be. Creating a good bit of commotion, which ended up spooking that fish just a little bit. Poked at those lionfish, kind of bumped his, his uh, full spear into the rocks, which created a little bit of noise, which ended up making that fish kind of freak out. But it wasn't a big deal. This fish was still in the cave, and as you can tell, a very nice black grouper. I stuck my head under there and I, I, I was kind of really excited just because this was the first fish that we saw that was really caved up and was going to give us a good shot. So as you can tell, I'm pretty excited. So what I'm doing on this dive here is I'm making it a little bit easier for Nick to where he can kind of just go down there and blast this fish. What I was going to do is I was going to go down to the bottom, take my pole spear, which I just disconnected from my belt reel and line it up with where the fish's head is just so he has no um, no issues finding exactly where this fish is and how it's oriented in the ledge. So I head down here just to confirm that that fish didn't move and also to make it to where it was very obvious. But another thing I did notice is when he was poking at that lionfish and all that stuff, it kind of spooked the grouper a little bit more than I wanted it to, but that fish wasn't very uh phased just because he was kind of in this little hole and i think he thought he was a little bit more blended in than he was but as you can tell that fish is still there and he was going to give us a very easy shot so i was pretty happy about that his tail his tail is towards the north his tail is that way and okay. his head's like into the hole just trying to blast him right in the gill plate or something Woo. So I got to the surface, explained where it was, and I knew it was game on. Nick goes down here, and a couple more things that I noticed throughout this dive is one thing, if you go down to the left of the ledge and you kind of position yourself to where you're holding that pole spear on the open, it's a little bit easier to kind of get that pole spear lined up and take a quicker shot and make it to where that fish is not going to be... Uh, able to escape but also he didn't stick his head a little bit farther up under there so he could know where that fish was exactly and he ended up landing a middle of the body shot which is 
not a big deal. He ended up landing the fish fully. And also he was pulling on the line, which is something I typically don't like to do. If I'm within arm's length of the fish, I like to actually put a hand on the fish to make sure it doesn't rip off. But overall, he did a really good job, ended up landing a really nice black grouper. I think that's a black. It looks like a black. It's a black, black just that it was on the dot, yeah. Without the screen. Because you had screens before, for sure. Okay. That's awesome. Good job. <laughs> so I was swimming back to the boat. Nick landed that really nice black grouper, and on my way back, I spotted this really nice black grouper. He's swimming towards this ledge, and he just went under it. So I knew I had to get a pole spear and go back down, just because we only had two. And I got my pole spear from Troy. Troy offered to record, so I was really happy about that. And I'm kind of going to point out a couple little things that I think might help you to improve, just in case you're wondering. If you're not, you can kind of just turn your volume down and just watch how this plays out. But if you are... I head down here, I kind of flatten out. Typically I'd like to approach from the left side, but there's so many sea fans and little things in the way to line a 12 foot pole spear up over there would be pretty hard. So I knew I had to go down from this right side and try and get a shot there. Unfortunately, there was a lionfish that I didn't know moved and I didn't want to get poked by it in the back, the neck or the head or whatever. But I get out, I saw that fish moved, so I was good to go all the way up under there on my next dive and hopefully get a shot on this fish. So. You watch closely i do a little bit of a, a calmer duck dive here get my fins out of the water first and pull them down in a straight line to not create a big splash so start heading down and once i'm about 20 foot or so from the bottom i start loading up my pole spear i hadn't been using a pole spear much for the past year or so so it's kind of a little fresh to it but still i uh i was getting pretty uh used to using it by the third or fourth day here so get down here, line my pole spear up for the hole just way before I'm even in line to take the shot. So get down here. I noticed that the hole went back to about 10 or so feet. So I line up, put my arm all the way up under there and send that pole spear flying. As you can tell, I am pulling on that pole spear, which is kind of just pulling on the fish and my shot, which I typically don't like to do, but I kind of had to just to get that fish far enough out to where I can get a hand on the actual fish just to make sure my shot doesn't pull out and get a hand on this fish I knew it wasn't gonna go anywhere and as you can tell I'm pretty happy to land this this good of a fish this shallow so overall an awesome dive hope you learned a little something if not sorry I couldn't help you but ended off my trip with a nice, nice fish. fish dude nice job so I was pretty stoked about that fish. Happy to end my trip off with a with kind of a bang there. But if you guys didn't enjoy the video, make sure to tell me what I did wrong in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, thanks for sticking along. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.